Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. Won't you help to sing these songs of freedom? Cause all I ever have, redemption songs. Friends, our 14th gift for today, redemption. Redemption, this obviously is a song by Bob Marley, is the gift in the portion of Va'era. And we're talking about the exodus of Egypt. And redemption is the 14th gift. Friends, great diseases and great, great calamities happen to the uh, and to humanity throughout ge the generations. Let's just take an example. Malaria, for example, is known to mankind already for 2,500 years since Hippocrates, and we know that great advancements happened in the last 2,500 years. Obviously, a Nobel Prize was won 1907 for this uh, discovery of that the cause of malaria is Bill Gates put literally billions of dollars into this uh, um, malaria mission of, of, of ours to eradicate malaria from this world great diseases came to the world to the world 1348 the black plague where people and um, literally a third of europe was wiped out and 35 million people in china died so great great calamities and disasters happened in the world and yet man prevailed and he went forward and he searched for a uh, uh, um, uh, uh, cure for these diseases and our question is today, what is the engine for this advan advancement of man? Why wasn't he satisfied with the situation that happened? After all, in 1348, the main reason, you'll be surprised to know, of the Black Plague that came from the courts of the kings was that the stars were not aligned in the correct way. And that's why the Black Plague came. Later on, there were other reasons, but... Looking at the stars, if the stars are going to uh, um, align again in the same manner, humanity does not stand a chance. So therefore, they lived in a circular type of, of a pattern. You cannot escape your destiny. That's what happened in the Middle Ages, and that's what, what happened in Rome, in Greece, and also in Egypt. We started with Bob Marley. That's what happened in Jamaica also. A black man is born black. And in the, in, in the end of the 19th century, the supremacy of the white man with colonialism prevailed. And he was subjugated. We all know that. What happened was, is that uh, um, the Christian faith came to the black continent and also to Jamaica and offered salvation. Salvation is not redemption. Salvation means that you should believe, each one with his own belief, in that case Jesus, and when they believed in him, you will be salvated. That's one option of basically offering salvation to people from their uh, um, um, dire straight situation, which is being black, being subjugated in the land of Jamaica. But a very controversial politician by the name of Marcus Garvey claimed otherwise. He did not offer people salvation. He offered people redemption. Now, where did he take that notion from when the whole world is talking about salvation? He said, let's redeem ourselves. And redemption is not standing still and waiting for someone to do something for you, but is taking action and improving one's life and offering hope and optimism to your situation, which led to, obviously, Jamaica having its own government and ruling not under the supremacy of the white man, and obviously we talked about last week Rosa Parks and, and, and Martin Luther King Day, which is coming up in, in a few days. So the redemption is a totally different notion. Where did they take that from? Now let me surprise you with another uh, um, um, concept of redemption, which is the concept of movies. In Hollywood, if you notice... All the movies, or at least 99% of them, there is always the same script. A bad guy, the good guy, and the good guy always prevails. Most of the times, okay? Now, where did they take that notion from? That good is always going to prevail. And besides, when you go to the street and you say, oh, what's going to be, what's going to be? People say, oh, it's going to be okay. So everything's going to be all right. How do we know that everything is going to be all right? Maybe everything is not going to be all right. Maybe everything is going to be a total disaster. 
Where did humanity take the notion and the guts to think even that we should always be optimistic, there's always going to be hope, and the world is heading towards a fantastic and, and, and continuation? We didn't see that in Egypt. Egypt was a very circular notion. Gods fought in between themselves. The gods fought the god of the sun, the god of the moon. And people were subjugated. What was to be your destiny is your destiny. And it's a big carousel. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. Big Ferris wheel. That's the term I'm looking for. Sometimes you're on the top of the Ferris wheel. Sometimes you're on the bottom. In Rome... Same thing, same notion, a circular pattern, and obviously in Greece, they were the people that introduced tragedy to our lexicon. Okay, yes, they offered comedy, but that was a, a very pinpointed comedy to make people laugh here and now. But what's going to happen in the end? The notion is that people are going to go towards tragedy. Friends, that's what happened in all the generations. So I'm starting with the questions that we started again. How do people find the guts in themselves to say, yes, we can cure malaria, or we can beat the supremacy of the white man in Jamaica, or everything is going to be okay in all the movies and all the scripts in our life? Where did we take that notion from? In this week's portion, friends, the concept of redemption is introduced. Until now, God is revealing himself to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as it says in the portion, in the portion in El Shaddai, which means he reveals himself with one name that he has, which is called El God of Shaddai, and translated from from Hebrew is Shaddai Bo, which mean, which means whatever we see in that God, a God that is sufficient for human beings, which means how do you want to view God? God is the Almighty; He takes care of me. Everything is is fantastic, and that's the God that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob worship. Now God is coming and say, I'm going to reveal myself with a different name. With a different name. Yudke Vavke. You cannot pronounce the, 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 the name of God explicitly. You might see him behind me on the, on the synagogue's wall. But that name is a totally different name. The name means that I will be in the future. Which means God is changing the perception of history, perception of time. Until now you worked in a circular pattern. Now you're going to work, as all the later commentaries in our generation say, in a linear pattern. There is a beginning to the world. The Big Bang, Genesis, and it's heading towards messianic times. Which means it's heading for something that is, is even greater than what it was before. That's a huge concept that God is introducing. And he says, I'm going to start it with redemption of the Jewish people. Your situation was in dire straits. I'm going to redeem you. I'm going to bring you to the land of milk and honey. And things are going to become better from now on. Yes, there are going to be uh, um, turbulence on the way. It's going to go up and down. Some of the turbulence are going to be dark pits, like the Inquisition, like the Holocaust. But you're heading towards a direction of redemption. And redemption is not only uh, um, with a linear pattern. Redemption also causes us four uh, um, issues or four topics, which I want to talk about. The first is that God says, until now you were subjugated to nature. From now on, you can control nature. You can advance. You don't take things as they are. You can question them. You can redeem them. You can challenge nature. And that's the first aspect. The second aspect is that a man is receiving to himself a, 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 a meaning to what he does. Until now, he thought that what he's doing uh, does, does not have a meaning in the world. He does, he plows, he, 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 he harvests, he, he takes care of his children, and then he dies, and then everything starts all over again. But now, people start from where he stopped, so he gets a different idea, which means he's on a linear pattern. And the third uh, aspect is that the language of redemption talks about the doings of a human being here in this world note that the torah does not talk about the world to come our scriptures do not talk about again the written scriptures do not talk about the world to come or about the resurrection of the dead that's uh, that we got from the oral torah which obviously was brought down from sinai that's our belief 
but there's a specific reason why God did not include them specifically in the written uh, uh, five books of Moses. And that is to tell you that we should focus on this world, redeeming this world, doing good in this world, not having any calculations about the world to come. We're not looking for salvation. We're not, talking for so- we're not looking for someone to tell us, oh, in the world to come, it's going to be good. No, here and now, we have to bring blessing to the world. We have to uh, um, forward uh, um, this world towards a better place. So the third notion, the third aspect, is that the language of redemption is talking about the here and the now. And the fourth one is doing the right thing. Friends, doing the right thing is not about trying to feel or trying to uh, um, um, do something for yourself. Because doing something for yourself is very egotistical. Doing the right thing is something beyond yourself is even if that does not suit you, you need to do it. And redemption starts with doing something that is beyond you. And most of the time, it's doing the right thing. The right thing is something that needs to be done, even though it does not benefit you. And how did our world, how would our world look like without redemption? No one would search for a cure for malaria. What is, is no one will even search for a cure for the Black Plague. No one would want to redeem and, and, and black individuals in Jamaica. Let the white supremacy continue on. No one would even dare to think that most of the time the good wins in every script of every movie or in our lives. No, sometimes bad people win. After all, the world is filled with wars. 4,000 years of documented history, at least 3,300 of them, we had a war somewhere in this world. So without the concept of redemption, we wouldn't be, there wouldn't be hope and there wouldn't be any uh, um, advancement for for our world. But let's take a, a, a very simple example, marriage. If there wasn't a concept of redemption, then today we will be doomed. Every person would think about himself, how he wants to advance himself in this world. And he would want to secure himself financially, want to secure himself in terms of his loneliness and his aspirations. But he would not look at the other individual. The good uh, uh, path towards a successful marriage is to want to redeem the other. I want to redeem you from your loneliness from the fact that you uh, um, cannot advance yourself. And if I want to redeem my spouse, and she wants to redeem me, then that's a, 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 a equation for a successful marriage. So friends, today we talked about redemption. Redemption is the most powerful tool and the powerful gift that made humanity leap forward and advance. Without that gift in this week's portion, we will stick, we will still be stuck in the 1348 of thinking that we cannot combat any disease, any poverty, any notion, any human suffering, and let the stars decide for us where we want to be and how we want to handle ourselves.